My question is for the government representative in the Senate. Senator Gold, today, June 8th, is World Oceans Day, a day, a day where people around the world rally to protect and restore our shared oceans and to ensure a stable climate. Canada has 162,000 kilometers of Arctic Ocean coastline with sea ice across three territories and four provinces, with much of it indigenous territory. Yesterday, the CBC reported that according to new scientific research, the Arctic Ocean is predicted to be free of summer ice potentially as early as 2030, depending on global emissions, a full decade earlier than previous estimates. This big melt would significantly impact Arctic communities by damaging infrastructure built on increasingly unstable permafrost and threaten the way of life of Arctic residents. Ice-free summers would be devastating to the fragile ecosystems that depend on sea ice from algae to polar bears. Canada is an Arctic nation, and the Arctic is the Earth's air conditioner, with Arctic ice and snow reflecting back 80% of the sun's radiations. Ice-free summers in the Arctic Ocean will lead to more extreme weather events in the rest of Canada and certainly well beyond. Senator Gold, what plans does the Canadian government have in place to respond to the multiple and serious implications of the loss of sea ice in the Arctic Ocean? Senator Gold. Thank you for raising uh, this important question. Uh, the uh, melting of, of Arctic ice the at, at the accelerating pace is a preoccupation for all the reasons you mentioned. And they go beyond that, including the challenges for, uh, for those who rely on gathering, hunting and gathering their food. During my visit to the north some years ago, that was very evident even then, for search and rescue that follow from, the, uh, fr from all of that, uh, and indeed to our sovereignty. The government has taken action uh, with regard to the health of our oceans, um, and I could I, I, and, and th there's much to say there, but with respect to your, your, the particular uh, question, um, uh, as there is less and less ice in the Arctic, uh, the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, along with the Canadian Coast Guards, have expanded our presence uh, and capabilities in the short term to defend our sovereignty, defend the communities that are affected, respond to the increasing risks of, of, of climate-based disasters, and are working as well in the scientific community uh, to address and to continue to address further uh, how to mitigate the effects of this uh, seemingly, for the moment, irreversible and, 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 and dangerous trend. Senator Coyle. Thank you for your response, and I, and I look forward to hearing more about the mitigation aspect as well. Um, Senator Gould, could you tell us uh, anything about uh, how Canada is collaborating with other Arctic countries on these loss of sea ice challenges? Sure. I mean, the context of all of this, of course, is, is our uh, ongoing, our, the, the government of Canada's uh, ongoing uh, efforts along with other uh, nations to combat climate change. Um, but, uh, and in that regard, relying upon science and on collaboration with our partners. On the Arctic issues in specifically, Canada meets regularly with our circumpolar partners uh, to deal with issues such as the ones you've mentioned and others uh, surrounding issues of climate change and, and other uh, issues, security and, and the like. Some years ago, as you know, the government released its Arctic and Northern Policy Framework, providing overarching priorities uh, to the government and the investments uh, in the Arctic uh, that will take us to 2030 and beyond. This was co-developed with Northerners, territorial and provincial governments, First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. And once again, to repeat, uh, Canada is working with, it, with its other partners in, in the Arctic region to address this area, this issue of, of common concern.